Hey, no, I'm back. Shalom, my dear friends. Let's give some tzedaka. The midst of tzedaka, if the charity says, "Gedolit tzedaka shem kareve says a geula." Tzedaka hastens the redemption, redemption for all of us from exile, and also in particularly redeeming those who are captured, the hostages in the clutches of those murderers. And as we rejoice about those who already have been freed. We pray Hashem for the rest, for all of them to be released, and for all of us to be released, as we keep on saying. Talking about this controversy and the difficult decision they had to take about doing a partial deal of allowing a certain group of people to be released, to be saved, from those murderers. Was it the right thing? Was it not the right thing? Now, I'm certainly not going to give an opinion here, but I do want to give some halachic background and show you how this subject has been discussed already back in the time of the Mishnah, the Gemara. And I want to quote for you some clear halacha by Maimonides on the subject. And the Rambam Laws of charity, laws of gifts to the poor, says the following in chapter 8. The redemption of captives receives priority over sustaining the poor and providing them with clothing. And he says, There is no greater mitzvah than the redemption of captives. He says, Why? Why is this greater than feeding a poor man? And the reason is very simple. Because the captive is not just hungry and thirsty, in addition to the reality of him not being taken care of, etc., etc., they're also in danger of their lives. And he stands in life-threatening situation. The one who is ignoring and not paying attention to the redemption, says, violates a number of commandments. Number one, Do not harden your heart or close your hand. Do not stand by when the blood of your neighbor is in danger. You shall not oppress him with exhausting work in your presence. And then there is... Positive commandments. Open your heart and your hand to help him. Says the Torah, you should make sure should make sure that your brother can live with you. And obviously, love your fellow, your neighbor as yourself. This is all the biblical verses. Then we have different verses in the prophets and in the in the in the Ksuvim. And the Rambam concludes that, that paragraph, There is no greater mitzvah as the redemption of the captives. But then in chapter 12, he says there is a proviso. And let me read what he says. We do not redeem captives for more than their worth, for the benefit of the world at large. Why? So that the enemies will not pursue people to hold them captive. Now, the Rambam says the following. We do not redeem them for more than their worth. What means worth? Is there a value to life? But the explanation, as all the commentators say, is if we're going to start giving them exorbitant amounts, then this will just encourage our enemies to get into this lucrative business. Take capture, captives, and then you will be, they will redeem him for ransom or for whatever things. In the case of Hamas, to be able to protect themselves from being annihilated at this moment. So, and then he says even further, we do not assist captives to escape. Why? Because it might endanger others. 
So while the Rambam had said that Pidyon Shruim is the most important mitzvah, we also have to take into consideration the effects that it will have to the wider community. So as I said, it's an extremely complicated and difficult decision to make. We certainly hope that they made the right decision. I just wanted to share with you this halacha. And you probably know that there was a famous story with the Maram of Rottenburg, where in the year 12, eight, 12, uh, 1280 approximately, or later actually, he was imprisoned in Worms. And for seven years he stayed in prison. He refused the community to allow to ransom him because it shouldn't affect further imprisonment of others.